Hello everybody, um, I wanted to have a discussion on traveling around the earth um, and working with others and thinking about helping other people on that uh, journey around earth. Um, so we're going to go into this topic uh, in detail. I didn't find uh, enough information on this topic. Um, really, uh, this is one of the first times uh, in history that we can do this so affordably. And we have so much access to people uh, before we, we travel. So there are so many topics and so many different ideas on how to travel. Um, you know, and uh, basically I wanted to look at um, a travel map. Um, this is a flight map showing the air traffic flow chart um, globally. And there are several versions of this um, that you should definitely look at. Um, so I want to emphasize, um, you know, my idea here is really to try to figure out, um, you know, how to uh, help out and make the trip, um, you know, both environmentally correct um, and friendly correct and just um, spiritually wise. Um, so there are a number of different ways um, to travel and uh, definitely you want to think about your particular ideas. So uh, there's so much to talk about, but you can basically see there's a couple areas of highlighted major travel. And actually, this is not the only way to look at it. I definitely look at, uh, we're gonna look at a live flight map, but basically you see there's a lot of traffic in Asia and the United States and then Europe. So most people, when they think about traveling around the world, um, basically are talking about Asia, Europe, and the United States. Now, there's actually um, very little flights around Africa, um, and South America um, and other locations. So definitely, um, I would advise you that um, going to places that are a little bit unusual may be very helpful. Uh, so some examples of that is that there is a lot of work to be done on the North Pole and South Pole. So definitely take a look um, at some odd locations um, in terms of uh, things. So, for example, um, you know, eventually we have to leave our planet Earth, um, and some of the most interesting traveling may actually be, um, for example, up in Alaska, um, up in Russia, or even Northern Europe. And likewise, on the South Pole, we have Argentina, Patagonia here, and other areas of, of uh, even the South tip of South Africa and other areas that are actually close to the South Pole. So definitely think about um, some interesting ideas um, when you want to try. So here is a live flight map and you can kind of see how significant the United States is in Europe and actually in different times of the day definitely different areas will light up. Asia right now is in dark. Um, you know, it is daytime here, 10 o'clock, so it's, you know, evening there. A lot of flights stop after midnight. I wanted to highlight a couple of interesting ideas as you think about traveling. Um, so actually, uh, some of the most polluted areas in the world can also be the most dangerous, um, not only from the environment perspective, but also from, the, you know, it just wouldn't be that wise. Uh, oftentimes in northern India and even in China, uh, in Beijing and eastern China, Shanghai and other areas can be very polluted and some of these highly populated areas of the world may actually be kind of dangerous and not so great to travel in and that even includes Europe and some parts of America. So you may want to look at some alternatives um, to traveling uh, to these highly populated areas. The other interesting concept that I wanted to stress is water, um, you know, in terms of safety. Um, actually, some of the most dangerous areas in the world can have no water, um, so you should be very cautious about food. You know, when people don't have food, they make bad decisions sometimes, and that could ruin everything for a trip. So you can see, um, basically, the Middle East is very much in need of water and that should be a concern um, when traveling and even China and even northern India here um, should be a concern. Um, you can also see in South America there are areas in Chile here that you should be concerned about um, and even down in Mexico uh, around Mexico City and even in Haiti right so there is a definite um, concern in water and food. So you should definitely look at the water and food maps 
um, before. The FAO has a link, a uh, data map link that you should look at and see where the farms are. So again, what I'm stressing here is don't go to a place where there is no food or no water. Um, that is a big concern. You might want to try to help, but it actually would probably even make the situation worse. It's adding one more person that maybe doesn't understand how serious the problems are with water and food. So as you travel around the world, certainly even the island of Java is a concern here and other areas. So uh, be cautious. The other thing is you can get into trouble and land yourself in jail for the rest of your life um, with drugs and different kinds of problems. So be extremely cautious. If you have a criminal record, you may not even be able to travel to some places, even in Canada for a minor driving offense um, or even a serious driving offense like drunk driving. Um, you know, they share some of the information and unfortunately you might not even, even if you were sitting in your car and not driving and drinking, you can get a a uh, drunk driving ticket even if you're not moving the vehicle so and that can prevent you from traveling to a number of different countries it is terrible unfortunately it would be best to have be able to travel anywhere you want and obviously if you have a lot of significant amount of friends in the area maybe you can reconsider traveling to a certain location on earth so again there are many places to travel to we're going to look at some of the pricing uh, for tickets and a lot of different ideas in terms of traveling. I'm going to go through some of these maps quickly um, at first, but here's the overall global map. Take a look at the global map. What I did on my map is I outlined some of the places that I may or may not be interested in. And so I'm not sure where I'm going to go exactly, or even if I'll change my mind, I want to kind of have a variety of options. So you might want to have three routes to each location. So this location has multiple out routes and in routes so I can kind of figure out things as I go. Um, so what I did here is I looked at a number of different factors, safety factors and things, and then looked at the number of days that you can stay there. Sometimes you get 90 days, sometimes you only have 30 days, sometimes you can have 180 days with extension of a visa. Um, and the visa process can be complicated and we'll get into that detail as well. But again, I wanna stress helping out as a priority in your travel experience so definitely I am trying to plan this one or two years ahead and making friends online it is very difficult and this is one of the first conversations I've had um, to try to look at helping and looking at ways to travel around and I'm very interested in making that as low cost and even free I believe you could probably make it around the world for free and there are some people that have done it uh, but you would need to really make some good friends and work on it. Um, and I think that that's the best way is to try to do it as with a zero budget um, because then you're traveling based on how the earth wants you to travel. So the lower the budget, perhaps the smarter and the wiser your trip is gonna be because then you're gonna be dependent on help for your trip. And I definitely am trying to go with others. So if you're interested in traveling with me, let me know. Let me know where you're interested in. I've highlighted a number of different areas that I'm interested in and that other people are interested in. Now, what I wanted to say is there is by airplane and there is also by boat. This is a boat image as well. And 90% of all goods, when you're looking at the seaports, um, almost everything for import and export side is shipped. So it's very important to look at both the air traffic map and the boating map. And I've highlighted certain areas that look particularly interesting along the boating route pathways. You can see here Singapore, and it actually doesn't even emphasize it enough. And I'll add an image showing all the boats soon, but it was easiest to look at it from the traffic. Um, so there's also another way is to sail around the world. and. That's really interesting because there it is almost impossible to do that and I would recommend sharing boats and even giving up on your boat part of the way and reselling it of some sort. So you can see there's certain paths along the west coast here, you have down to South America and then getting across the Atlantic, right? There's a couple different ways. These are not necessarily the best ways, um, but uh, working with the wind and the uh, the Gulf Stream or whatever the currents are is very important. You can see Africa definitely has a route. There's definitely a route around the Mediterranean up here um, and then along Southeast Asia and some definite other ports in some interesting ways. So, uh, but a fresh map can get you started. You can download this from NASA. Just look 
right here, World Topo Bathymetric, and I recommend getting the bathymetric image. Get the image of Earth because you can see there's certain areas that are very interesting spiritually. So, so let's talk about that uh, carefully on the spiritual side. So actually the main reason that I want to travel around Earth is for spiritual reasons and to help others. So you may want to look at an earthquake map and this is where the Earth is most active. You can also look at a lightning map, but you can see um, some of these areas are, can be very dangerous on earthquakes, even down here in Puerto Rico, which you don't looks like a small little speck, but there's quite a lot of earthquakes in there. I'll zoom in so you can see. So you can see here, uh, some of the most spectacular lands have a lot of earthquakes, um, like in Southeast Asia, because you have very big cliffs, beautiful environment, all kinds of things um, that are interesting on, on an earthquake map. So sorry, I need to take my breath. We're gonna look at the visa requirements uh, quickly here. So actually it really depends on your country. I wanted to cover some of the main countries here. So if you're an American citizen, if you're in green, you just need a passport. Um, that can cost you money and take a significant amount of time to get. So um, we'll talk about how to do that. But basically you can travel the green areas by just flying there, and but you need your passport. Um, uh, for sure. Uh, in Canada, you, you're even starting to need, you can use your regular ID, but you have to have a special ID with a star card on it. But Europe, for the most part, but in China, for instance, you definitely need to get a visa. And here you need a visa in India as well. Um, and you actually have to do it electronically. And even significant countries like Nigeria, you have to have an electronic visa as well. And, and you can see that's a major country, uh, part of Africa. Um, so it's important and Vietnam also requires a visa and that could be a very interesting place to travel to so you need to get an electronic visa for that. Um, different countries like I said have Europeans have a different map as well you can see here um, on their visa requirements um, here is for Indian citizens they actually have a, a lot of requirements are visa required and that means you sometimes need to mail a letter to the consulate or even visit the consulate and talk with them uh, before going to the country so that can be very complicated because consulates are sometimes only located in major cities so for example you'd have to go to a major consulate in uh, Mumbai or uh, New Delhi of a foreign country you can look those up on the internet so China also has some visa free not required uh, as well um, but you can see that there's quite a lot of restrictions um, and that is terrible um, I'm actually very unhappy about visa restrictions I think it should be very open um, to travel um, however you should be very wise as well um, about some of the problems in water and food um, so here you can see Brazilians can actually travel to quite a lot of areas they can travel to almost all of South America and then, oddly, they cannot travel to Mexico or uh, United States or Canada without significant difficulty. Um, you can't do electronic visa. You have to do a visa requirement there. Um, now, here is the uh, average. So you can see that different people are making different amounts of money around the world. You can see a lot of people making around $10,000 per year or $5,000 or less. And then some areas there are making upwards of forty dollars and $50,000 a year. So that can be expensive to travel to certain regions um, depending on what your budget is. And so, so again, I wanna look at the spiritual side of traveling. So basically there are a lot of places to travel to. You might wanna look at the United Nations World Heritage Site list. That is very interesting as well. Let me show you. So I'm not even sure if I should show this, but I'm gonna show it. Um, these are a list of all the United Nations World Heritage Sites. Some of these are unbelievable locations. Machu Picchu, Serengeti, Desert, Taj Mahal. These are some of the most important historical places on the planet. And you can see kind of a map of where they're distributed in general. And this is not necessarily true. You can see it's very biased towards Europe. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of those areas during World War II were bombed. And you can definitely see the consequences of war in Europe. Um, it is worth seeing how amazing some of the art is, but at the same time, a lot of it was bombed. So definitely think outside the box, even though these are the World Heritage Sites, definitely think about other concepts when you're traveling. And for sure, 
I would say South America and Africa are very empty in terms of flights. You can see that almost all of these are going into Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro, a couple places here in Colombia, and uh, basically even other parts of the day, this is very empty as well. So um, basically uh, there are places to travel to that need help and need tourism. And actually the future of travel may be very different than this image. I actually anticipate all this air traffic primarily being over Africa, believe it or not, uh, in the next uh, 20 to 30 years or even sooner, right? Because Nigeria is starting to fill in here and uh, Africa has the jungle and some very interesting places to travel to. But uh, there are diseases like malaria that you need to be concerned about um, and other concerns. But uh, in general, there are some very safe places in Africa as well, but you have to be cautious. So here is the marine traffic map. I'm gonna add all the vessels on here um, and see what you can see. So all of a sudden, this is all the shipping here. You can see very centric around Asia here, right? And you may actually wanna think about, um, you know, rethink about where you wanna go. Um, it could be very hot uh, near the equator. Um, and so that's another factor, even for me, I'm concerned. Um, I went down to Florida and Florida is actually not even on the equator the equator's down here and it was almost too hot the water salt water was too much for me everything so um it can be very hot year round um in the equator um for a lot of these places to travel to the other thing to think about is the road map you can get the live map and see the traffic conditions and definitely there are certain places for example paris you know um there's places that you could go to but honestly the traffic can be so miserable and terrible that why would you even want to visit there europe is definitely an example of that and that you got to be cautious about a lot of people take your rail but even that can be difficult because some of the best places to travel to are outside of the bounds of things that actually on the water so the mediterranean becomes critical so I want to look at the Earth at night map. Um, this gives you an idea for where the population centers are. And you can definitely load up this map and see where there are lots of people and lots of lights. Um, and that's worthwhile seeing. And you can see in South America, um, pretty much not a lot. You can see that's Sao Paulo and Rio down there. And then Africa, even darker here. Um, and then let's go over to the Southeast Asia portion. So you can see um, actually Australia being quite dark um, and uh, here is you see the island of java indonesia up here in Malilla, manila and malaysia singapore and some other areas taiwan being pretty uh, busy as well so uh this can help you understand some things now one kind of funny thing is to look at the rain map you know i from a spiritual perspective i'm interested in traveling to where it gets the most rain a lot of people would say i never want to travel there but you know what i love rain and i really wanted to see certain areas um during the rainiest season i wanted to see a whole meter of rain dump on me in a month um now that could be scary with the airplanes because flights can be dangerous but you can see over the months here different regions get different rain and you can see a uh, summer season and winter season so now you can see the north side of the map starting to light up and now you can see even here in bangladesh now look at the rain just along the coast of India it gets to be one of the most in the world. This is more rain that you're getting in the jungle, right? So a very interesting situation here in India and you can see it even gets more in August in some areas. And so uh, you could look at this. Now I really should look at this also in South America, but um, it's very interesting to see uh, the rain map so you can see there's even a little portion here on this island so you get one side of the island here and then on the other season winter season you get the other side here so it's important to realize there's definitely two seasons um, and the rain can be a factor I want to just look at this really quick so you can see uh, South America um, so there is some very interesting areas and areas that you should definitely stay out of because of the jungle my brother almost died he went uh, to Bolivia and then when the problem with Bolivia here the interesting thing is that it's actually a significant part of the deep jungle so it's got basically the high mountain range here and then you could slip into the deepest part of the jungle where there's basically nobody and that could be extremely dangerous he got sick lost um he, he had to it was I, don't, I can't even tell you how bad it was so he almost died so basically going into the jungle is not easy 
and you know he said there was a black cougar that crossed his path right in front of him um, and did not eat him so there's uh but so he did survive that but um but anyway so i'm actually avoiding certain areas um, but the perimeter of some of these areas you can see down here in rio you actually get some of the same rain as you might get in the jungle there i go to a different season so you can see here um, you can see sort of Africa getting some more uh, rain, but actually the United States and these Europe actually gets pretty boring uh, kind of rain. But it can be very interesting uh, from a spiritual perspective uh, to study many factors. Um, so uh, let's uh, talk about some other things here. So let's just talk about prices um, in general. Um, I, I sold my prices. These are just ones that I figured out were the lowest of the low. Uh, but in general, you're talking about flights in and out of Miami here, $200 to $500, 300 to 800. These are international flights, right? Um, and you can see Tokyo, uh, so you kind of get your idea of what the flights might cost. And they're, they are very, uh, very much arranging. So. Uh, when you're in a particular region, you will notice that the flights will become a lot. Like here's a $40 flight, $200 flight, and in general, I'm trying to do three points. So you got way in and out and a, a, an alternative idea. So there's different flights and definitely Africa and South America, because there's not a lot of flights there, becomes a little more costly as well as Australia to just get there it can be complicated and expensive. So, um, but I tried to look at a fair price, but actually there's definitely a ranges. Now, if you're trying to get a passport, here are some of the requirements you might think about. You might double check with the website, but basically you need to have $110 at least in the United States, get a passport photo, driver's license, birth certificate, fill out a form, and you have to submit it in person uh, at one of these places. A renewal process is also important. Um, passports do last quite a long time I think 10 years or more I'm not sure exactly on the dates but uh, you might rethink about some of those things so again here are some of the major regions again you can see here you have Colombia you have Nigeria and West Africa East Africa South America some areas like Bali uh, Phuket Thailand and some other areas in Japan both North and South Japan and one thing I would stress is that you know a lot of flights will go into one place like Tokyo for instance you can get a cheaper flight but actually it might not be as nice as say going to southern Japan um, for example, Lonely Planet, uh, they do all their research out of Osaka, not even Tokyo, because a lot of the people prefer um, the quieterness and not so busy city of Osaka, even though Osaka is a very massive city, um, but it's not as massive as Tokyo. So, um, and there are some interesting areas like Dubai. So a lot of flights may pass through there, but there are alternatives like uh, Qatar and Bahrain and even Kuwait. So there are some alternatives in each of these circled areas. Here you have uh, Turkey, Istanbul, um, and some others. So I hope we've really uh, looked at the question of how to help too. So, uh, you know, one of the things is trying to make friends with people uh, before you go to places. And that is almost impossible online. I've tried, but it's difficult, um, you know, because you're just not sure where you're going and even making talking with people both on uh, uh, social media or even professional social media uh, websites where it's about business um, you know because uh, <coughs> usually you have to go for just a tourist uh, visa so um, it is actually complicated um, getting some things um, going but uh, I'm still working on that and I would like to work with some others so let's uh, specifically look at uh, Africa and South America right so basically one of the interesting things that I've been thinking about is farming right so if you're thinking about traveling um, one of the things that I'm gonna try to do is travel to a major city and then visit the most nearest farming area from that major city so uh, that's actually gonna be one of the most funnest parts of my trip um, is to do some like farm tourism so I'm super excited about that. Um, just learning from the farmers around the world as I travel. So that's probably gonna be the main part of what I'm interested in doing um, and learning from how the farmers work uh, around the world. So I'm just super excited. Um, now already I've been talking with some of my friends and I've 
I figured out that some of my long-term friends have missions trips and they're uh, working with church organizations and different people and I was super surprised and impressed with how many organizations there are. So I'm going to try to work with some of my local friends um, some of them have for other friends that are working on uh, farms in Africa um, and we're gonna see what we can do um, to understand and help out um, you know with what's going on now the FAO map you can uh, load the farming map and there's land use cover use here and they have um, I think it's under crops and vegetations. Yes, so there's map of agreement. This one I've been using extensively uh, to try to find farms. So uh, you can definitely see where the farms are globally on this map. Um, but you also want to look at the population areas. So you might find a city that you're interested in. Um, let's just look at Bali, for instance, here, right? So Bali is this island right off of. Uh, uh, Java right and there's basically you can zoom in and start to see this is a pollution map unfortunately but uh, let's see here where's this one so uh, you can zoom in and start to see uh, where the farms are on that particular island you can start to see it's mainly on this side which is actually the port side um, and you if you look at the marina here you can start to see um, the marina as well so sorry this is loading a little bit slowly but uh, there's the island of dense bar so we're starting to see so basically uh, right in there is where the farms are um, so that is an interesting area to look at uh, for me in particular sorry about this um, so let's zoom in even more so you can see so uh, there are a lot of farms here but this island is so densely populated and there's also another a lot of other areas but the problem is getting in and out of an international airport um, so it may take some complexity here. <laughs> Sorry, this is Bali. So it looks like actually this island next to it may actually be a better opportunity for farming if you're interested in studying that. And actually the farms are right in here and up in there. So there's definitely some farms up here in the volcano area. So uh, that is one particular idea. Uh, let's pause this and look at Phuket. So here is uh, Phuket, Thailand, right? Um, you can see uh, I've also tried to zoom in on the uh, boating map and you can start to see uh, Phuket here on the boating side uh, so you can see some of the ports. Um, now, uh, sorry about this, so we're going to look at the, the farming map. So you can see most of the farming actually is over here. Thailand has a huge area of farmland but there's also some farmland up in here so it's actually quite far. Phuket is on the tip here and that could be, uh, you know, this is like 50 kilometers, so that's at least 20 kilometers outside of Phuket. Um, but there are some farms kind of in that valley there. So here's the kind of the population map. So you can see, again, there's a huge amount of population. And you can see it's even starting to trace with the farmland itself there. But there's actually a huge city there and there. So this coast is very interesting because it gets so much rain. So there's that aspect of the uh, idea so actually and then there's different kinds of religions in each of these areas and I definitely wanted to explore um, some of the different ideas in uh, religious perspectives in Southeast Asia because uh, it's super interesting now you can start to see down here in Singapore and some other areas of the population as this map loads and I'm sorry it's loading a little bit slowly here but you can see uh, Java being totally packed and actually Phuket being a lot less populated um, here uh, than the Dead Spar in Bali. Um, and then this is one of the most interesting islands in the world that and I've been looking at very carefully. So uh, basically, you know, the problem here is that even discussing some of these areas, uh, you know, like Borneo, it just shouldn't, maybe shouldn't even be traveled to because it's basically a wildlife center. Um, look at what has happened in the Philippines. It's starting to even, you can start to sense that this is going to fill in with just tons of people, leaving no room for the wildlife. So that's a big question. And also certain parts of the Philippines, as you get outside of Manila, from what I'm understanding, the south part becomes almost lawless. So some of these islands, although I'm showing them, you have to be super careful because there is no government and no uh anything so basically you just have to be a nice person um, and stay out of trouble uh, but uh, 
still uh, getting in trouble can be a very big problem in a foreign country so be very careful but here you can start to see the rest of asia the population being huge in china so there's actually a lot of opportunities down here in south china but the farming situation is different there so if you zoom out on this map which we'll try to do and i'm sorry this has taken a little while you can start to see uh the farming situation all over southeast asia so uh, we're going to go up here to China and see what's going on in China. So you can see there's a dense amount of farms here. And actually the best opportunity for farming is just maybe outside of Shanghai where you get a little bit less population. Still, there's huge population here. So it is a big concern um, when traveling. So you can see South Korea actually may be a, more of an opportunity uh, with less people and uh, the farming situation may actually be pretty interesting over here along the coast so uh, there is some different ideas and Japan actually um, being uh, one of the reasons probably why people are leaving China to Japan is there's just so many people um, if you look at the population map you can start to see Tokyo is huge so and that is one of the factors. So basically all of this population here and even in the southern tip of India and Mumbai. So Pakistan being totally packed too. So actually uh, Africa uh, does have a lot of people. There's about a billion people in Africa now. So you see a lot of this population here um, and some different areas and some coastal cities you may not have heard of like Dar es Salaam. And there's definitely some islands and some other things uh, I'm looking specifically at Madagascar for some things and actually I'm looking at the far west coast of Africa here uh, Dakar and some other areas so let's go back to these main maps so you can kind of look at what's going on so the reason I highlighted this is because I want to try to do this for free and make it go as low cost as possible so what I would recommend is that it kind of requires going through the high flight zones uh, and then taking a separate airplane to get to where you may want to go to. So some of these major areas like New York City, you may just have to fly to, and it could be too expensive to spend the night there unless you make a friend ahead of time. So I have a few friends in New York City, um, and I'm trying to make some friends along other paths, and I would gladly try to help you out with something here. Uh, I live on the West Coast outside of Seattle, so if you need some help, let me know, and I can see what I can do. I have friends in San Francisco and some other areas, uh, Chicago and in Boston. So, uh, but uh, let me know and we can see what we can try to work out. So we could be very surprised what we can figure out. Um, so, uh, and in general, this is how this might work. Um, so here is again, some of the prices and days. I tried to add the time of stay. So a lot of this might actually be wrong. It says 90 days, it could be only 30 days. Um, so be careful on the actual dates and prices. Uh, there's no guarantee and you might want to book at least 15 days in advance. Um, that's two or three. It's basically you need three weeks or four weeks to get an advance to get these kind of prices. So that's a four week in advance preparation. So by the time you're at one place, your visa is running out and then almost when you land, you need to be prepared to within the first week or so to book a ticket somewhere else or work with people on things. Um, and I definitely want to see some action on the boating side because one of the keys to farming and natural resources is the ports and these are the port cities. So definitely take a careful look at this map and see what you can do um, to help on the import export and maybe even get a full time job or just make some friends with some people in some of these busy port cities. Um, that can be very fun because you're right on the ocean and you can have a lifetime adventure um, with uh, traveling because you're working with the sea and the ocean as well as car air freight is huge. So there's just a number of data things that we could look at. Um, let me look at one thing that you may be interested in. I took this TSA data and tried to compile it. Um, so the day of the week, you may actually find the best flights on a Tuesday or a Wednesday because that's the lowest amount of flying. So actually you can fly for cheaper on those days. Um, there's a lot of different TSA data here. Um, it isn't always consistent. So 
Here you can see Wednesday being pretty good. I don't know if that's correct exactly, but you can see here, um, this is how I plotted it here, um, some older data as well. Um, and I think I got, yeah, so, but basically on the lowest days on a Tuesday or Wednesday, you can probably find uh, good flights. So let me just take a step back and look at this whole picture of traveling around the world, right? So basically there are so many factors. Um, do not necessarily think that uh, I wasted a lot of time just traveling to somewhere because some, because I thought it was like, a, you know, I really want to make this a spiritual experience and a healthy experience to help people out. So there is a lot of factors to think about. Um, when looking at this and I want to do it for almost free um, so I'm really looking for friends and help on this trip and I'm very interested in trying to help you as well um, and making a lot of friends on this journey so I think we can really work together on understanding this and someday um, I pray that we can probably travel around the world for free um, and we need to keep working on making that. There is different websites and, and uh, you know, hot youth hostels and different kinds of things like that that make it extra affordable, but we need to keep working on ways online to make it extremely affordable um, and also thinking about the emissions costs so we can actually do that by boat and even by sailboat. So that's something to reconsider. Um, I'm actually trying to sail from Boston all the way down to Rio de Janeiro. I'm trying to organize, I found a free sailboat and there's so many, you'd be surprised, there's tens of thousands of free sailboats probably in the Mediterranean and all along the United States and just around the world, millions maybe even, of not being used. So you may be able to get yourself a sailboat and work with some people on that idea as well. So there's low emissions, no emissions ways to get around as well but it can be dangerous on the open ocean let me first of all tell you that so you want to make sure that you get several people going with um, but here is the main map um, that I worked on it took me uh, many hours to look up all this information and study it carefully and there's definitely some places I missed I didn't even show up Madagascar uh, you know unfortunately you have to fly into a non-port city here, which is really complicated and expensive. You can see $500 just for a one-way trip, and that's probably the lowest of the low. You can look at some of these other prices, and those are way more scary, um, sometimes $1,000 or more. Um, and so there's certain certain cities um, that I did avoid as well. You can see I didn't even talk about northern India here or even in China because of the population, but you can definitely fly into Shanghai. Um, and make that happen as well. So some of the big money ones are actually ones that you might not expect. Um, but anyway, so please try to work on helping each other out. Like I really think it can be fun to make this happen and work together, um, especially if we work on the farming side of things. So I'm gonna be um, studying that in more detail and seeing how I can help out people. So. Um, there are groups like Doctors Without Borders, Engineers Without Borders, and some uh, professional organizations that do travel, like a lot of those in the United States travel to Central America or South America to work on helping people um, with health care and some other things. So like I said, I was completely surprised. After I started talking with my friends, direct friends that I've had for a long time, I was very surprised to see how many friends that I have that are actually trying to do some good things for the other people and working with some organizations. We just needed to put it together and a lot of it was finding the time uh, to work together. So let me know what other ideas you have on how to make this happen. Um, I would gladly try to work with you. Take a look at all these maps. Uh, you'll see some very significant details that I missed. Um, and I'd be glad to talk with you and re-research them to see what I missed and how to work on a specific region uh, in terms of traveling there. Um, so a lot of areas I did not um, discuss um, simply because I was uh, afraid of the water situation, overpopulation, or even air pollution. So there's a lot of factors uh, to consider. Again, I hope this has helped you in an amazing way to understand our planet. And what I would emphasize is I didn't even 
touch certain topics like the electromagnetic fields, uh, the weather patterns, and different things like that. We kind of looked into some of that in the rain areas, but uh, let me just do that really quick. Hold on. So uh, you may really want to look at this carefully. Um, this map here, uh, you can change to the base map and do a national, oh, well, let's see if we can get the actual satellite map. Sorry about this. Um, uh, world imagery, there you are. So here's a satellite map. <clears throat> um, this is the uh, declination field map. Um, <coughs> you will find that uh, some of the cloud patterns and weather patterns, this goes right through Mount Everest, right through Singapore. There's a whole other world of traveling based on spiritual uh, traveling and thinking that the Earth's alive. And I definitely, this is a huge factor um, for me personally. Um, I'm looking at a place here, Dawala in Cameroon and some other areas because of this. I've already traveled up here uh, to uh, Duluth, Minnesota. Your head, you know, the left and the right there's a slight pull and if you have a compass it will shift uh, significantly degrees even you can see uh, 180 degrees it can flip all completely opposite the way that you'd expect in certain areas you know 90 degrees it just changes dramatically compass never even worked um, they had to use the stars um, to cross the Atlantic and some other areas like the Pacific right so uh, you know it's just funny because in the United States we say oh the compass works I grew up in a place where the compass works but Europe, it kind of the compass works in London, but not exactly true uh, in Russia and some other areas. So uh, this can be uh, 10 degrees, 20 degrees off uh, at least. So there are some different uh, versions of this map. Uh, this is another map. I'll let that load here. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about this too much, and I really should have talked about this almost entirely. Um, the model on the North Pole and the South Pole, again, we did talk briefly about traveling on the North um, but I'll look at this real quickly here. Um, so I'm still learning a lot about this. Um, but here you can see it's got all these different kind of field map guides on top of that. Um, but you can see on the North Pole, you got the, the actual magnetic pole. Uh, I'm not sure if that's it, but yeah. So and you can see there's definitely some shifting of the declination field and uh, some weirdness of what's going on there. So, uh, but you can look at all the maps uh, and. Uh, it is a little bit weird. You have to click maps here, and then you can get uh, X, Y, Z components and some others. Uh, but again, how this helps, um, basically, you know, what I was mainly trying to stress here um, is if I grew up on this side of the field, it may be interesting to have your brain think about what's going on on the opposite side of the field. So if you grew up here in Asia, you may be interested in traveling to the red side of the field just to see how significant that is in terms of the field. So traveling can be interesting on either side of this. And these field lines do change over time. I don't necessarily trust these, but you can see uh, it does change a little bit and then back 1900 will be really different so uh well it's pretty similar actually but you can see it kind of goes through florida but uh but anyway i would trust the current map as actual truth um i don't know about all those other ones so uh and definitely take a look at these this is declination this is the overall force you can find yourself in danger because of you know i, I really want to see a lot of lightning on my trip so i'm trying to look at the lightning maps and there's a very dangerous spot uh, that i'm really scared of one is Lake Maracibo, the other is in Rwanda. But, and I'm also trying to work on some films. Uh, I'm trying to make some fictional projects. So I have about five or six films that I'm trying to make. I may not actually be able to produce them, but I want to work on them and find some actors and some people that would be interested in potentially helping. But horizontal and inclination. So inclination is slightly different. And you do want to look at the secular field change. That is the change over a year. Uh, it's hard to explain what's going on here, but basically this will be the field change. So if the field is, say, the same, it will be green. Uh, this will load in a second. Sorry about this. So here's the map, and you can see along this area it was primarily stable. So that's slightly different than the other map, uh, which was here. So this was the declination secular change and the field change. Anyway, a lot of stuff to talk about. but. Uh, what I would say is, you know, there are so many people traveling every year. There's about, I think, I forgot the exact number, but it's in the billions now. So 
a lot of people are flying around. It is a luxury to fly around and be very thankful and try to help others. So we really want to try to make it possible for everybody to check out different areas. And actually, there's a risk like traveling. I, I feel like I've almost traveled too much in some respects, and it is a risk like for family life and all the other kind of stability of your mental stability and different factors. So you know it may be best sometimes to just stay where you're at um from a stability standpoint and study i've been working on studying this for like five years or more so uh there's just a lot of information and uh you know i wasted some time traveling before and now i'm gonna try to do it a little different and actually i'm feeling like i'm still gonna waste some time because i need to focus on some of the spiritual aspects like when i travel to a place i need to listen to the people there and say hey where what should I do? What, what kind of things, you know, are you learning from the local people uh, when you visit a place? Not just necessarily saying, I want to go here. Um, having some uh, spiritual guidance for that would be very wise. So again, uh, please let me know what you're thinking about. I'd be glad to try to work with you on some details. Um, take a look at some of these maps here and we can talk about them in great detail. You can grab your own map and start to outline where you think. And uh, you know, what I would say is, like I said, I'm a little bit scared, I'm a little hesitant. You know, I, I'm not sure what I wanna do or even if I'm gonna make it around the world. Um, you know, I may just wanna check out a couple places and kind of be cautious about the other places because man, you can die. So you gotta be careful uh, in some areas uh, and things like that. So. Uh, be careful and try to make a lot of friends and be very friendly to people. You know, it's a definite challenge. It's a lesson, life lesson to work and be nice. So again, uh, please uh, let me know what you're trying to think about. I'd be glad to try to help you out. Let me know what I can do to help you out personally. Uh, if you're trying to do this, um, even if it's not me traveling there, I'm very interested in what your experiences are and how to help you out. So please let me know what I can do to help you out. Thank you so much and let me know. Talk with you later. See you.